This week, tough gadgets. How much abuse can they take? And it's good riddance to VHS video recorders. But what should you buy to replace them? While most manufacturers reckon their products will stand up at least to everyday wear and tear, for the more clumsy or accident-prone amongst us, there's a growing range of rugged gadgets. Stuff that's designed to take more than a gentle tease. So, this week we're going to put some of those gadgets to the test. We've devised a series of experiments to see just how tough our contenders are, culminating in some sadistically extreme testing. And we'll show you probably the toughest gadget on Earth. This thing could honestly save your life. First up, this Roberts radio. It looks like it would survive a fall from a plane. But actually, Roberts' claims are somewhat more modest. They reckon it's ideal for poolside parties, boating and caravanning. It costs about £100. It's made of ABS and styrene for maximum impact resistance. It's also got a full complement of flaps and seals to make it water resistant. Aha, water resistant. It so happens we have here a standard domestic dishwasher. And in order to test the water resistance of the Roberts, I intend to put it in and subject it to the rinse cycle. With the radio tuned to talk sport and the volume turned up, we should be able to monitor things. Now, water and electronics don't normally mix. Anything other than the purest H2O conducts electricity, causing short circuits. And even when it dries out, the minerals in the water leave enough unpleasant deposits to make sure things don't work. So those seals had better be good. Right, the cycle's finished. Let's open it up and have a look. <laughs> And it seems to have passed. Excellent. Next up, the Nokia 5140 mobile phone. Nokia reckons it's much better than your average mobile when it comes to shrugging off the elements. There's a rubber case to resist the knocks. The connectors on the bottom have a protective flap, and inside, the electronics live in this module for further resistance to accidental bumps, water splashes, and dust. The thing that intrigued us most out of that lot was dust. So I've decided to clean the house using this vacuum cleaner, but with the 5140 tucked inside the bit where all the dust flies around. Let's see if it can survive that. Dust can cause more havoc with gadgets than you might think. It can clog up the contacts in keyboards so they don't work. If it's gritty, it can cause abrasion, and if it's magnetic, it can even affect the operation of the electronic circuits. Right, I've done upstairs and downstairs, and I'm pleased to say that the house is spotless, which is more than can be said for the foam. It's wreathed in its own cocoon of dust. Let's call it and see what happens. Will it? Won't it? We'll know in a minute. Come on. Brilliant. It's even vibrating. That's what I'd call dust resistance. Splendid. Now, lots of watches are water resistant, but very few claim to be the toughest watches of all time. But that's exactly what Casio claim for their G-Shock range. So, let's try one on the spin cycle. With the G-Shock, protection comes from several layers of hard and soft materials. The case is made of fibre-reinforced resin, which is hard. Behind it are soft insulating rings, and on the front surface of the watch, there's a soft urethane material. Together, they're supposed to resist impact from any direction. How did it get on? Well, it seems to be... Working perfectly. Not surprisingly, what claims to be the toughest watch of all time can easily cope with the appliance of science. So, all the tough gadgets more than lived up to their manufacturer's claims. But join us later when Susie tries things that are much more cruel. And we'll reveal what could be the toughest gadget on Earth. 
dad's, and this is mine, have never been able to master setting the video recorder. But it doesn't matter anymore, because VHS is dead. And quite frankly, good riddance. As well as being impossible to program, the quality was rubbish and got worse as the tapes wore out. And storing the tapes took up half the living room. But now there's a new range of systems available to record your favourite programmes. None of them use the antiquated magnetic tape that wears out, and all are supposed to be ultra convenient. Well, in theory, anyway, but we want to know for sure. So we've set up a little test of our four recording devices to see which one is the easiest to use. Our guinea pig, wake up guinea pig. Hello. A man who's sure to expose even the slightest tricky thing about these devices, my dad. You right, dad? Yes, fine. To find out whether any of these are actually any good, I gave my dad a couple of hours to see if he could manage to record the Tea Time News, a task he found all too tricky with his old VHS. The most VHS-like recorder available at the moment is this. It's a DVD recorder. You can record TV programmes straight off the TV onto DVD. And on the latest machines like this, you also get the option of recording straight to a hard drive, which can store up to 78 hours of telly. Then you can burn the very best stuff to DVD to keep forever. Programming this £460 Toshiba is pretty much the same as a conventional VHS machine. Either just set the start and finish times you want, or punch in the Video Plus code. What about the Toshiba DVD? With that system, you've got two options. You can record to the hard drive or to a DVD. I chose a DVD option because it's the nearest to VHS. You have to format the DVD first. This takes a little bit of time. I found the on-screen menus difficult to follow. Taking another approach is the broadband box. It too has a huge hard drive which you can record onto, but its real party trick is that it claims to combine all the functions of your PC, TV, stereo and DVD all in one massive box. All you do is use the on-screen menus and choose what you want it to do. Either play DVDs, play music or using the keyboard that it comes with, you can use it as a computer and surf the net. As all Dad wants to do is record the news, he'll need to select the program guide icon, which will then connect him to the Box's own TV listings website. Once there, he can scroll down through the channels and then select the program he wants to record. What about the broadband box? I found it clumsy and awkward to program, and the instructions quite difficult to follow. Continuing on a PC theme is this, the Windows Media Center. Like the broadband box, it's a computer, there's a stereo, a TV, a DVD player, and a DVD recorder. This 1700 pound system is made by Microsoft, so the layout should look quite familiar to most people, apart from my dad, obviously. To program it, he needs to select the TV option and then use the guide to search through the listings. Once he's found the Tea Time News, he needs to highlight it and press the record button on the remote. What did you think of the Windows Media Center? Although it's computer driven, you don't have to use the computer to program it. The on-screen menus are very clear and easy to follow. But it's this, Sky's Plus Box, which is currently dominating the market. It costs £250 to install, and there's a monthly fee of around 27 quid. I can't see Pop having much trouble with this. All you have to do is press the guide button on the handset, scroll through to the channel you want, pick the program, and press the red record button on the remote. Press the green button to record the whole series. So, what about the Sky Plus? That was very good. Very easy and clear to program. The on-screen menus are very simple to follow, and I like that one. Amazingly, my dad managed to record the news with every machine, so they all pass our dad test. That's four more nails in the VHS coffin, with a couple of favourites really standing out. Acting as a guinea pig, it was clear my dad's favourite was the Sky Plus box, but not everyone wants to subscribe to Sky. Personally, I think the Windows Media Centre is the way forward. It's got a huge hard drive, can burn DVDs, act as a PC and play music. OK, the initial expense is considerable, but I think this is the future of home entertainment systems. Now, back to our rugged gadgets. And this could be the toughest gadget in the world, possibly next to these things. It's the Panasonic Toughbook computer. Now, most laptop computers have the resilience 
of a giant wafer thin mint. However, this was designed to be used by people who go to work in things like these. Panasonic's Tough Book is one of the toughest of an increasingly popular breed, the ruggedized laptop. Toughness starts with the case. It's magnesium alloy, 20 times stronger than the usual plastic. It's even got built-in bumpers. So you can knock it off your desk without that sickening feeling in your tummy. Again, and again, and again. The sockets and drives are all tucked up behind these rubberized, dust-resistant doors. They've tested them with simulated sandstorms. And the keyboard and screen are water-resistant, so you can spill things on them or leave the computer out in the rain. They've been tested under conditions resembling a tropical downpour. And for good measure, the whole thing's been baked at 60 degrees centigrade and frozen to minus 29. And the protection extends to your data. They've made the hard drive extra hard by making it soft. It's encased in jelly to absorb shocks. And the internal wiring's all flexible as well for the same reason. This test is replicating a thousand hours in the back of a truck. It also has an extra tough touchpad, which is frankly one of the most awkward I've ever used. Fortunately, the screen's touch sensitive too, so there's no need to use it. At £3,000, the Tough Book is more than twice the price of similarly specified conventional laptops. But then, it's designed to cope with a bit more than just some gentle living room word processing. In Iraq and Afghanistan, the US Army says the failure rate for standard laptops was between 80 and 90%. For Tough Books, it was under 10%. And they can even save your life. Early in the Iraqi war, a firefight broke out in a district that was allegedly under coalition control. As the bullets flew around, a soldier followed his instinct and held up his tough book against the gunfire. The shield worked. The bullet that was heading in his direction didn't lodge in him. It hit his hard drive and stayed there. And he lived to tell the tale. Sometimes the computer survives the ordeal as well. This one was shot at during a police car chase. A bullet wiped out the hard drive, but it still booted up. And with a new hard drive inserted into the slot, it worked perfectly. So, gadgets can survive real-life challenges that their makers never envisaged, which got us thinking sadistically. How extreme could we get with the gadgets we tested earlier? Join us later when Susie pushes them to the edge of destruction and maybe beyond. This week, Stuff Magazine's editor Tom Dunmore has the inside gen on music download sites. OK, this little device here, the Apple iPod, has been incredibly successful over the past few months. The problem with it is a lot of people are getting it and finding it hard to find music for it, but now it's easier than ever to get hold of digital music, and that's thanks to the arrival of Apple's own music store. Now, the iTunes music store is by far and away the biggest site in the States, and that's mainly because it, it works so well with the iPod. It's also a great service. It's really easy to use. And instead of using your web browser, it uses uh, the iTunes software, which is, uh, in my view, the, the best sort of MP3 playing software that there is. Napster, or should I say the rebirth of Napster. It's legal now, which means you won't get arrested for downloading stuff, but unfortunately you will have to pay for the tracks that you do download. The really great thing about Napster is its catalogue. It's got 700,000 songs. However, there are some problems with it. Uh, if you uh, are not a member, then it costs £1.9p for every track that you download. So it's often cheaper to go online and buy a CD than it is to download the music. Napster, like many download services, doesn't use MP3. It uses Windows Media. Uh, now, Windows Media files won't play on the iPod because the iPod's made by Apple, long-term Microsoft rival. So uh, Napster's got together with Samsung to produce the Napster pod. Looks kind of familiar, huh? Um, it's slightly bigger and, you know, I don't think quite as sexy, but it's still a, quite a nice player. My favourite website of the moment is Bleep. Now, 
Bleep is the website of one record company. It's an English record company called Warp Records. It's uh, dance music and electronica, like the Aphex Twin and Square Pusher. So it's quite offbeat stuff, and it's a small catalogue. But everything that they produce is available on the website for 99p a track, and it's applied in MP3, so it's compatible with anything, including the iPod. And it's really, really high quality. It's recorded at much better quality than all the rival sites. And if you buy an album, you can pick up an album for as little as, as seven or eight pounds. So it's also cheaper than buying the CD. Uh, and in my view, it's the sort of model that people should go for um, when they're making these download sites. Then there's uh, whippit.com, which is uh, another UK site. I mean, you can pick up songs for 29p, but the good ones tend to be about 80p. My favourite feature about Whippit is uh, the ability to pay by text. So, you know, if you don't have a credit card or, you know, you don't want to put this stuff on your credit card, you can send a text message and it goes on your mobile phone bill instead. Great if you've got a company on mobile phone. Now back to our tough gadgets the G-Shock watch, the Nokia 5140 mobile phone, and the rugged Robert's radio. All of them have already lived up to their manufacturer's claims of ruggedness. Now we want to see whether they can actually outperform those claims. We've devised a series of extreme tests to see just how much punishment these things can take. First up, we're taking them off-roading. But no gentle country drive for our tough gadgets. We've tied them to the tow bar so that we can drag them through the dirt. And have they survived? Well, the radio's lost one of its knobs, but... The works! Just a punch. The phone's still taking calls. Yay! Marvellous. And the watch looks completely unbothered by the whole experience. I don't think we're being cruel enough. Time for lunch. Obviously, being stuck out on an airfield, there's not really anywhere for us to get lunch. So we've brought along a barbecue. And while our little chef, Dan, grills some sausages and a few rashes of bacon, let's see what sort of heat our gadgets can endure. Can I have that phone, please? Medium rare. I do love your cuisine. Oh, it's hot. Each gadget got a full five minutes on the griddle. And did it kill them? Well, incredibly, no. The watch did seem to have died, but after a minute or so, it was working perfectly. The radio was still happily playing throughout its roasting. There's no stopping the French, is there? Once you wind them up, that's it. Oh, you can't put that out. I'll get all the letters from French people. Right. And although the plastic over the screen had melted, the phone worked just fine. <gasps> that's extraordinary. It's working. So, all still working, but maybe a little hot and bothered. Let's cool them down. Well, that was certainly a serious sloshing. I wonder if any of them are still working. Let's try the radio first. Just turn the volume. The British Humanist Association, which still works, and it's in English. English. Perfect. The watch, if you can see that, that's still going strong. And let's try the phone. I will give it a call and see if it works. OK, it's calling. I don't believe it. <laughs> what are we supposed to do to destroy these gadgets? Even after a few handbrake turns in the back of a pickup, they were still working. We have, however, got one more experience for them, and short of a black box, I don't think you'll find any gadget that would claim to survive our final test. Now, I would suggest that any viewers with a nervous disposition put their fingers in their ears right about now. The 
vehicle clearly hasn't survived the explosion, but I can hear the radio even from here. It doesn't sound very happy. Oh, let's have a look. Today. Just tune anything. Mm, I think that could well have gone. No, no, can't get anything on that. So that's that's definitely given up. Hardly surprising. The watch. Well, there you go, the G-Shock. It looks, apart from its barbecued edges, it actually looks brand new. And finally, as I searched for the phone, the radio started uttering what had to be its last gasps. But it still had one surprise left for us. Let's turn this down so you can hear what I'm saying. A gendarme des deux sèvres âgées de 35 ans qui est en prison ce soir, dans la nuit de dimanche à lundi, en revenant d'une fête de village, il a percuté. Well, there you go. It's um, so it hasn't given a go. The Frenchman has returned. As for the phone, it is looking not marvellous, I have to say. Let's call it and see if it's ring. See if it will ring. Surely not. Okay. Well, I don't believe that. And the phone not only rang, but we used it to call everyone we knew to tell them how our tests had gone, and it worked perfectly. Unbelievably, after being dragged across a field, barbecued, soaked and blown up, the phone, the watch and the radio are all still working. Now that's what I call tough. started his YouTube channel nine years ago and has since become a self-taught record-breaking internet celebrity. Minecraft is one of the biggest selling games of all time. 70 million copies have been snapped up.